Afternoon year four, we have history and you also have some really fun PE challenges with Mr. Meachin this afternoon. Uh, that greedy should have received a table um, via email explaining everything with the PE challenges. Any other questions you can ask me or the email that's on the letter, but they look super fun and great, great challenges. So I will enjoy doing them as well. I'm going to share my screen here for history. The outcome of today's lesson is to understand why the Anglo-Saxons came to Britain and we're going to then pretend to be an Anglo-Saxon and write a diary entry um, from the perspective of an Anglo-Saxon coming over to Britain. So you can see three questions here. When did the Anglo-Saxon period start and end? When did the Viking period start and end? And a really important one, because you're going to need to reference this in your diary entry later on, where did the Anglo-Saxons come from? You may already know that it was from Scandinavia, but which specific countries? And can you also see which um, bodies of water that they passed through or used to get to Britain? Which ocean was it or oceans or seas? You tell me. So freeze the screen and there's three research questions for you there. Okay. Bit of food for thought. How do you think the Anglo-Saxons got their names? And that's quite a tricky question. See if you can just have a chat with a sibling or, or a parent or carer. Any particular suggestions? If you're not too sure, have a look at this map here. We can see areas of Britain the settlers occupied. So pretty much all of Britain, because obviously we've got Scotland up here and then Wales to the west and Ireland and so on. So we had the Angles into Mercia and Northumbria, and we had the Saxons into East Anglia, East Anglia, which is like Norwich, um, now Ipswich, those sort of places. And then we also had the Jutes, which were Wessex. Okay, so how do you think the Anglo-Saxons got their names? And which tribe is missing from the name Anglo-Saxons? So the Jutes, obviously, there's no reference to that in the name, but we've got the Angles, and the Saxons, so they combine, they merge into the Anglo-Saxons. That's where it came from. They picked those to describe these particular um, group of people because as well as the Jutes, there were some other tribes, but they did not um, attack and conquer as much of, of Britain as the Angles and the Saxons did. So they, they led with a two main names there to combine and which countries did they come from hopefully you found that in a bit of research but predominantly Denmark um you can also see here let me make this a bit bigger for you the Netherlands and North Germany however historians don't actually know why Anglo-Saxons came to invade Britain but there are lots and lots of different reasons. Can you think of any reasons why um, people would have come from Scandinavia or the Netherlands or Germany to Britain? And actually, why do you think historians are unsure? It's a bit of a challenge X question there. Okay. The challenge X question there, why do you think historians are unsure? Remember, we have spoke about evidence before primary evidence and resources and secondary evidence and resources whilst we have lots of different artifacts lots of different stories and books written we can never be 100 percent sure because we don't have an interviewer to go and ask an anglo-saxon exactly why they came over to britain in four five six hundred a.d so a lot of it is down to um, what we read, but not personal experience, of course. 
here are some reasons as to why the Anglo-Saxons came. I, I did plan to show you a video here. I don't think I'm legally allowed to actually play this video. So it would be a good idea just to pause the video, open up a new screen and type that out. It's really important that you do this accurately so you get the exact video. So that's one idea. I'm gonna let you pause that. And then here is another idea here. So the story of Hengest and Horsa. Goodbye Romans. Despite the increase in attacks on Britain from the Picts, Scots and Saxons, by around 410 AD, the last of the Romans had left Britain to go and defend their home territory as they were under increased threat from external invaders. What this meant was that Britain was left to its own devices and much of Britain was actually unprepared for fighting because it was the Romans that were protecting them. The Gaelic speaking Scotty, who came from Ireland with descendants of the Picts who had earlier invaded Ireland around 200 AD. Historians believe that these Irish Scots invaded and claimed land in Scotland in the 4th and 5th centuries. I'm going to let you read this little bit here, but what this is telling us is that the Picts and Scots always threatened Britain and they were described as foul with a lust for blood by a historian for the from the time named Gildas. They're said to have streamed over Hadrian's Hall, killing everyone in their way. The British king, Vortigern, was left in charge after the Roman armies left, but he faced great difficulty organizing troops. He was worried that the Picts and the Scots were gonna take over Britain. So what he did to try and regain that control, he asked two brothers called Hengist and Horsa from Jutland, which we call Denmark nowadays, to come and fight for him and keep the Picts and Scots out. Hengist and Horsa were glad to oblige and they were brilliant, they were amazing. They successfully held back the Picts and the Scots. The issue was they liked it so much that they wanted to take the land for themselves. And over time, they brought in more warriors and more warriors and the invaders began to settle around Britain. And that meant the Brits were being pushed further and further out. So here we have the Anglo-Saxons. The brothers and their warriors weren't the only ones who had their sights set on colonizing Britain, so taking it over. Other Germanic tribes had also been invading Britain for some time, and without Roman protection, they proved to be a formidable force against the Brits. And that re-explains what I mentioned earlier, if you want to read that, about where they got their name. So, there's a couple of different reasons there, but in general, we do know where the Anglo-Saxons came from. I've given you, for your diary entry, some nice sentence openers here. Dear diary, I've just arrived to Britain from, we sailed over in, what is it? Is it a plane? Did they sail in a plane? Think carefully about that. The journey was, use some adjectives to describe that. I wonder how long it would take. That's a bit of added research for you. Why did they come to Britain? You can go for whatever reason that you best believe over the ones that I've told you. Life in our homeland was, what would it have been like? And life here is better because. So you've got a little bit of research and we're just writing a, a very brief diary entry, one or two paragraphs. You may want to do one extended paragraph and then add in a picture or a diagram. I look forward to seeing your additional research and your amazing diary entries. And I also really look forward to seeing you hopefully send in some of your PE challenge videos from Mr. Meacham. Bye-bye.